Hey, what's up guys? It's Huge9 and today I'm back with another tutorial and we're going to talk about parallel processing. So first of all, let's quickly explain what parallel processing means. Uh, basically, uh, we can do a lot of processing to our sounds, uh, let's say EQ, uh, compression, saturation, effects like delay or reverb and uh, doing stuff in parallel means uh, we're keeping uh, the dry signal and then just blend in a little bit or more depending on how much of the effect you want of the wet signal and then we can um, kind of get a mixture between the dry and the wet signal um, so we have the best of both worlds and uh, yeah let's just uh, dive into the project so uh, you can see the examples uh, the first example is uh, probably one of the easiest it's uh, parallel eq um, and we have a kick sample here so a typical techno trick uh, techno kick techno kick uh, with some uh, rumble and uh, let's say in this example we want to enhance the transient a little bit so that it cuts uh, better through the mix and um, in this case uh, we can use a uh, parallel eq so um, in Ableton it's really easy to set up um, if you are using a different DAW uh, then it's a little bit more complicated basically you have to uh, use a, a return track or you can route it to a bus and then blend in the, the signal from the uh, return uh, channel or the bus channel and in Ableton it's super easy you can uh, just group uh, your effects and then uh, create some chains here and then uh, you can create as many chains as you want and in this case we only have one chain of course because we're only doing uh, some parallel EQ and in this case um, um, uh, using a high pass uh, filter and boost uh, the high mid frequencies and we can just uh, give it a quick listen so you can uh, also hear that it's uh, kind of uh, like uh, soloing more um, the, the transient and the attack of the kick so the, the very bright part of the kick and um, then we will just blend in the signal now uh, back with our dry signal and you can see that I have uh, lowered the signal of the wet signal by 10 dB um, so that we can uh, um, get the dry signal and then add on top a little bit of this transient to uh, make it a little bit more bright and sharp and punchy. So you can hear the foundation of the kick is basically the same um, but um, with the parallel processing uh, the overall kick, the kick just gets a little bit more punch and uh, so it's uh, easier uh, to hear it in a full mix and uh, this is a very easy example uh, where you can see um, the benefits of parallel processing. And what's really important um, to mention is that if you're using uh, like processing or processing of, of your audio in general, uh, always make sure that uh, the volume is kind of matched, not perfectly, but it, at least it's, it's uh, roughly matched. Um, because um, if you use parallel processing and just keep stacking um, different chains on top on each other, uh, the signal will get a lot louder and uh, then you're tricking your ears because louder always sounds uh, better. That's uh, just a psychoacoustical psycho uh, thing. And uh, so please keep that in mind. And we will all also do uh, volume balancing in the other examples. But you can see here, um, I can quickly show you that the volume or at least the peak volume is basically the same. So you can see even if we're adding signal, uh, the peak value, for example, is uh, in this example, it's even a little bit quieter. Uh, but overall, it sounds a little bit louder because we added a little bit of uh, high frequencies. And um, but still, I think you kind of uh, get the idea. Then in the next example, um, let's see, we have a breakbeat loop here. 
uh, let's say okay we have this uh, playing uh, but what we want a little bit more punch and a little bit more dynamics and for example if we have them playing in the break we have a lot of headroom uh, to play with uh, so we can make it a little bit uh, more snappy and uh, in this case um, we can use a parallel compression so i've set up a chain here again um, with the uh, dry channel and the wet channel and on the wet channel we have a glue compressor and an EQ and with the glue compressor we're really smashing it uh, so we have a lot of gain reduction I will just uh, show it in a minute and um, so we can really try to enhance um, the punch of the drums and then we uh, add the EQ to add a little bit of highs and uh, some low frequencies and then we uh, just blend it in uh, with the dry signal and in this example you can see that i've uh, matched the volume so i've reduced a little bit the dry chain and on the wet chain we have just uh, set it to minus 14 db um so with this i'm trying uh, to uh, to keep it uh, at the same volume as the only the dry signal um and let's just uh, listen again and um, try to hear the difference So if you really listen, uh, listen uh, only to the transients, uh, the kick and the snare, the heads get a little bit sharper and uh, more up front. And um, let's just uh, quickly solo it so you can uh, hear it. It sounds like, let's put it back to normal volume. So you can uh, see that uh, the compressor is uh, really um, pushing down uh, the body of the signal and only leaves the transient intact because we are using a slow attack here and very short release um, so that we are really pushing the transients um, so that uh, yeah we get uh, the kind of signal we want and we add some EQ uh, to bring back some high frequencies and um, some low uh, frequencies and then uh, you can just adjust it to taste just keep in mind that you barely uh, or that you should uh, try to match the volume of the original signal but we can just try to blend it in here and let's start from the bottom So you get the idea, uh, of course, always make sure that, to blend in, that you can blend it into your taste. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit more, sometimes less. Always uh, make sure that in case it gets too loud, you can also uh, pull down the dry chain here um, so that uh, the volume in, in total uh, is kind of the same as before. And in the next example, uh, we have our bass sound here. So yeah, it's already pretty distorted, uh, but let's say uh, we want to add some uh, distortion on top and we make it really uh, distortion crunchy. And in this case, we uh, can use a parallel saturation. A lot of uh, saturation plug uh, plugins actually have a dry wet control, so you can always uh, have them um, in parallel. But in this case, uh, we're using the same concept. So we have an audio effect rack uh, with two additional channels. On the first one, we have uh, the amp um, in the rock uh, setting. And here we, can, uh, we will try to get uh, some mid frequencies and uh, mid high frequencies. So on the second chain, uh, we're just focusing on this frequency range. And then on the next uh, chain, we have another amp, but this time in the heavy uh, setting. And uh, here we are trying uh, to solo uh, more the high frequencies. 
so we just try um, to get uh, this like uh, noisy distorted uh, high frequencies and uh, then we'll just uh, add all uh, three signals together um, so i've balanced it already and then it sounds like this So we can hear we get a lot of uh, like the storage frequencies on top of the signal it makes it a little bit brighter and also we have some more stereo information because uh, on the high frequencies uh, it makes the sound a little bit wider and um, and so this uh, uh, cool trick um, to give uh, your sounds a little bit more uh, distortion on top uh, for example without uh, destroying the original signal we ha still have the dry signal here and we're just adding the distortion on top and then balancing the volume and with distortions always um, if you're distorting low frequencies it's Usually it's not a really good idea, especially if you're distorting frequencies below 100 hertz. So um, often in this case, if you have uh, an audio signal with a lot of uh, low frequency content, it's better to use parallel processing. And then um, on the distortion, um, you cut the low frequencies and just add uh, like the mid and high frequencies on top of your signal. And the next one is um, a trick uh, which is used a lot in like um, pop or maybe R&B uh, rap um, genres um, to make uh, vocals uh, really stand out. Um, a lot of times um, you want to boost the high frequencies of a vocal to make it uh, a little bit more present and brighter and more upfront. Um, but often it doesn't get you the sound you really want to. And uh, what's a really cool trick is also to use parallel processing here. And we use a kind of parallel, pro uh, parallel, parallel compression here. And you can see in the audio rack, I've already prepared it. So basically the first uh, thing, uh, what we're going to do is we're soloing just like the mid high or the mid high frequencies and the very high frequencies. And then we will compress them a lot to make it really tight and then blend it back with the original signal. So we can just hear it without the chain. I wanna die, I wanna die. I wanna die. Okay, let's hear the dry signal. I wanna die. 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 So it really uh, pushes out uh, the high frequency content and makes it uh, really like compact and um, uh, through the compression it uh, really brings the vocal even more up front and that's a cool trick uh, what you can do if you have like uh, especially like female vocals uh, where you want to uh, make them really shine in the mix and bring them really really up front. Um, so in this case, um, you can hear the solo sound. I wanna die, I wanna die, I wanna die, I wanna die. So with the compressor, we make it really tight and uh, so that it, it's really upfront. And uh, you can always uh, uh, try different settings here. You can even, for example, like add distortion um, on top to make it really crunchy and then bring it back to your dry signal. Uh, so you can play around with a lot of stuff here. Uh, you can get some cool uh, things out of this. Um, just to give you a few ideas what you can uh, use. So basically uh, what I've shown you today is like uh, things parallel EQ, parallel compression, parallel saturation, but there are a lot of uh, other things which you can do with uh, parallel processing and Ableton it's super easy. Uh, just group, uh, group it uh, to an audio effect rack, uh, make different chains, uh, add some processing to them and uh, there are basically uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know what you've come up with. Uh, see you in the next tutorial. Ciao, bye-bye.